Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're checking out the most affordable 6-core processor ever to be released, the Core i5-8400. Yes, it's cheaper than even the Ryzen 5 1600, though it doesn't feature hyper-threading support, so unlike the Ryzen CPU, there aren't 12 threads on offer. Still, for gamers, 6 cores should be ample, and at under $200 US, the Core i5-8400 might be the new go-to option for gamers on a budget. It is worth mentioning, though, this is a non-K model, and therefore it is locked and cannot be overclocked. Therefore, consumers will be better off pairing the Core i5-8400 with a motherboard not featuring the Z370 chipset, as they are typically more expensive and really only enable overclocking for unlocked parts. AMD were a bit cheeky and somewhat annoying, it has to be said, with their chipset naming for Ryzen. I mean, B350 and X399, come on guys. Anyway, since it would cause mass confusion having both AMD and Intel with B350 motherboards that are in no way compatible, Intel decided to one-up the cheeky buggers and go with B360. Bigger's always better, consumers know this, so a win for Intel. The only issue for those after B360 motherboards is the fact that they won't be available till next year. Only Z370 chipset boards will be released in 2017, which is a bit of a blunder on Intel's behalf. Also, remember that Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs aren't a drop-in upgrade for Z170 or Z270 platforms since Intel changed the alignment of the design. So for now, Core i5-8400 shoppers will have to go with the cheapest Z370 board they can dig up, and right now that means spending about $120 US. Anyway, assuming that you can pair the 8400 with a relatively cheap motherboard, it looks like Intel may have exposed a hole in Ryzen's lineup. Intel's priced the i5-8400 alongside AMD's Ryzen 5 1500X, which only has four cores, though it does have eight threads. So that might place them relatively on par in terms of resources. On paper, it certainly looks to be an interesting battle, so let's go see how it plays out in the real world. Full disclaimer, we have tested the Core i5-8400 on the Z370 motherboard using DDR4 3200 memory. For now, only Z370 boards will be on sale, and it's very likely that when paired with a B360 board next year, you will be limited to DDR4 2666 or 2400 memory speed, so keep that in mind. Anyway, for those using a Z370 board, it's possible to use DDR4 3200 memory, and doing so enables a bandwidth of 36GB per second, placing the Core i5-8400 on par with the Core i7-8700K. Moving on, we have some Cinebench R15 results, and here the i5-8400 was good for a multi-threaded score of 869 points, making it 9% faster than the Ryzen 5 1500X, and just 13% slower than the previous Intel flagship part, the Core i7 7700K. It was also 23% slower than the Ryzen 5 1600, though the single-thread score was almost 20% higher. So it will be interesting to see how the Core i5-8400 and Ryzen CPUs compare in real-world applications. Before we get to that though, here is a quick look at the PC Mark 10 results. This test really lacks clock speed, certainly more so than cores. As a result, the new Core i7 8700K does very well, as does the Core i5 8400, which proved to be 12% faster than the Ryzen 5 1600. The Excel Monte Carlo simulation makes good use of many cores and threads. As a result, the Core i5-8400 was 22% slower than the Ryzen 5 1600 and 5% slower than the 1500X. That said, it was a decent step up from the previous generation Core i5-7600K, completing the workload 12% faster. The Core i5-8400 also comes in well behind the Ryzen competition in the VeroCrypt benchmark. Here it was almost 40% slower than the Ryzen 5 1600 and 12% slower than the 1500X. That said, it was again much faster than the 7600K, offering around 36% greater throughput. Moving to 7-zip, the Core i5-8400 is able to just edge out the Ryzen 5 1500X in the decompression test while crushing it for the compression test. That said, it was slower than the Ryzen 5 1600 for both the compression and decompression work. Our handbrake workload doesn't agree with Ryzen, and even the Core i5-7600K beats the Ryzen 5 1500X, and that explains why the Core i5-8400 is able to match the R5-1600. That said, it was just 15% faster than the 7600K, and the reason for that being that the older KB Lake parts operate at higher frequencies. Content creators might be interested in what the Core i5-8400 has to offer. Testing with Premiere Pro CC showed that the Intel 6-core CPU was 9% faster than AMD's Ryzen 5 1600 in this application. Of course, you can overclock the Ryzen 5 CPU, and that will no doubt put it ahead, but still an impressive out-of-the-box result for Intel. 
The Ryzen Graphic 27 workload shows the Core i5-8400 only trailing the Ryzen 5 1600 processor by a slim margin in Blender, while it was significantly faster than the R5-1500X and i5-7600K. However, the more extreme Gooseberry workload actually sees the Core i5-8400 perform much closer to the R5-1500X than the R5-1600. Although an impressive 21% faster than the Core i5-7600K, it's now 24% slower than the R5-1600. Next up we have the Corona benchmark, and here the Core i5-8400 wasn't much faster than the Ryzen 5 1500X, completing the workload 6% faster. It was however 42% faster than the 7600K, so an impressive step forward there. The final application benchmark looks at performance using Povray, and here the Core i5-8400 finds itself situated between the Ryzen 5 1600 and 1500X, as well as last generation's Core i7-7700K 7, and i5-7600K. Okay, so time to do some gaming. As we saw previously with the 8700K, these high-end Intel CPUs are actually limited by the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti 1080p using the ultra-quality preset in Battlefield 1. Therefore, the Core i5-8400 delivered the same 137 FPS minimum and 157 FPS average. We'll look at the 720p performance in a moment. Before that though, let's check out the Vega 64 results. Moving to Vega 64 liquid cooled, the Ryzen 5 1600 is much more competitive as now just 5% slower than the Core i5-8400. That said, as I just noted, we are GPU limited at 1080p, so let's check out the 720p numbers. The first 720p results are based on the GTX 1080 Ti testing, and here the Core i5-8400 was still able to match the 8700K, though without the 200fps frame cap the margin is likely to grow. The 8400 was also 50% faster than the Ryzen 7 1800X, so obviously a pretty massive margin. Using Vega 64, the Core i5-8400's performance remained much the same, but the Ryzen 7 1800X is now 22% faster, and that places ahead of the 7600K. Moving on, we're back to 1080p, and this time we're checking out Ashes the Singularity Escalation. Comparing the heavy batch figures, the Core i5-8400 was 11% faster than the Ryzen 5 1600 and 21% faster than the 7600K, while it was able to match the 7700K. Swapping out the GTX 1080 Ti for the Vega 64 liquid-cooled graphics card, we don't really see much of a change here, and the results are similar across the board. Testing Civilization 6 using the DirectX 12 API, we see that the Core i5-8400 and Ryzen 5 1600 are quite similar in terms of performance. That said though, neither were much faster than the R5-1500X or Core i5-7600K either. Now with Vega 64 liquid cooled installed, the Core i5-8400 falls behind the Ryzen 5 1500X and is now considerably slower than the Ryzen 5 1600, 15% slower in fact when comparing the average frame rate. Finally, we have F1 2017, and this is the last game I've tested with for this video. The Core i5-8400 matched the 8700K, and here we see an impressive 182 FPS minimum, making it 24% faster than the Ryzen 5 1600. Much the same scene with the Vega 64 liquid cool graphics card installed. The margins do close up a little bit in this DirectX 11 title, but that's to be expected with a slower GPU. Capping off the benchmarks, here are some power consumption figures. Here we see that the Core i5-8400 does push total system draw 9% higher when compared to the Ryzen 5 1600. In fact, it consumed even more power than the Ryzen 7 1700 and 8 core 16 thread CPU. Overall power draw was comparable to that of the 7700K, which isn't bad, and a maximum system draw of 143 watts in the Corona benchmark is certainly very tame. Okay, before wrapping this review up, we should probably check out a few price versus performance scatter plots to work out just how well the Core i5-8400 stacks up in terms of value. First, let's take a look at the Premiere Pro CC results. Here, the Core i5-8400 did exceptionally well, beating not just the Ryzen 5 1500X, but also the R5-1600 by a convincing margin. If we draw a line from the 8400 to the 8700K, we see that the only CPU to deliver better value is the Ryzen 7 1700. For those seeking maximum bang for their buck while achieving a fast encode time, the R7 1700 is still the best CPU to get. However, if you don't have $300 to spend on a CPU, then the i5-8400 presents as a super great value option. That said though, if you pair the R7-1700 with a B350 motherboard and the Core i5-8400 on a Z370 board and factor in those costs, well now the Ryzen 7 CPU isn't a great deal more expensive. Even so, the i5-8400 still stacks up well and is again very competitive. What about Corona, a typical rendering workload? Well here the Core i5-8400 was less impressive. 
For a little extra money, the R5-1600 offers quite a bit more. If we draw a line from the R5-1600 to the R7-1700, we see that the Intel Coffee Lake i7 and i5 CPUs fall a bit short in this one. So it's by no means a slam dunk for the Core i5-8400. Once we factor in entry-level motherboard prices, the Ryzen 5 1600 looks to be considerably better value for these productivity workloads. Finally, let's take a look at the Ashes of the Singularity heavy batch results using the GTX 1080 Ti. Well, for games that can utilize all six of the Core i5-8400's cores, it appears to offer a noticeable performance advantage over the Ryzen CPUs. The Coffee Lake series really are the new kings of gaming. I'm keen to see how the Ryzen 5 1600 and Core i5-8400 stack up when testing 20 to 30 games, including overclocking for the R5 1600, and this is something I will do in the not too distant future. Although the Core i5-8400 still looks to be the best value option, including the motherboard prices, certainly makes it a much closer fight. Even though the Core i5-8400 is a lock CPU, and that is to say that it cannot be overclocked, the performance is still exceptional. And on that note, talking of overclocking, I know there'll be a few people that ask why I didn't do any base clock overclocking on this particular chip. Well, the reason for that is you can't. I know there's been a few rumors floating around that you can, but you certainly can't. The non-K models get detected and Intel locks it out. You get stuck at 102 megahertz on the base frequency, so that's a 2 megahertz increase, so that doesn't really net you much in the way of extra performance, so you can't do that. You also can't enable enhanced cores either, so you can't peg all six cores in this case at the maximum boost frequency, so that can't be done. I've tried the MSI, the ASRock board that you see here, and some Gigabyte boards, and they all had the same problem, or not really a problem, just it's not possible. Uh, as for the memory performance stuff, well, if you're using a Z370 board, which you have to at this point, then you can utilize whatever frequency your memory will support. Uh, these processors go up to very high speeds. But if in the future you're watching this video and doing a bit of research and you're buying a B360 or a H370 board or something along those lines that don't support overclocking, then I think you will be limited to DDR4 2400 memory. And in that case, the gaming performance will be a little less impressive. In some cases, you could lose quite a few frames. So that's just worth keeping in mind. Still, I think it's pretty clear that adding two extra cores and some extra cash to the Core i5 range is a winning move. It's a bit of a shame it took so long. Uh, Intel needed a bit of a kick up the backside from AMD, but I'm glad AMD were able to do that. And now we have some exciting new processors to play with. Anyway, for $180 US, the Core i5-8400 is going to be very difficult to beat. Of course, we still need more affordable motherboards to really capitalize, but things are certainly looking good. Depending on the application, the 8400 can be faster than the Ryzen 5 1600, though it can have also be quite a bit slower. So depending on what you're doing, Ryzen still may be a better choice. Uh, you can, of course, overclock the R5 1600, and that's a comparison I'll explore in much more detail soon with a heap of games. But for these reviews, I just like to make a base comparison because not everyone likes to overclock, so just keep that in mind. Uh, for now, though... When it comes to gaming, the Core i5-8400 certainly looks to be putting Ryzen in a bit of an awkward position, and the same may even be true for the Core i7 range. For the most part, six high-speed cores really are going to be enough for all the latest and greatest titles without any frame hitches at all. Even those seeking extreme frame rates for high refresh rate gaming shouldn't have any problem with these new Coffee Lake Core i5 CPUs. And well, that's another 8th gen core review in the bag. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you again soon for more benchmark action. Ah, oh, and I'm your host, Steve. That's me.